What's up, y'all? It's Kitty Cummins here. I'm chilling in Kenny C. I'm feeling degenerate in my DX shirt on. But that's a whole nother topic. Uh, I'm joined with my guest. It's his third time on the show. And just yesterday, he released his new studio album called Phases 2. That album is available on all digital music platforms. And to talk about that, I'm joined with the one and only OG Ugly. He is with me right now. How's it going? It's going great, buddy. How are you doing? I'm good, man. Thank you so much for being back. Third time. I appreciate you having me back, bro. This is the first uh, place I've ever interviewed with, actually. Oh, okay. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. So, first off, congrats on the release of the new album, Phases 2. Um, everybody go stream it. Go buy it. Go support it. It's got the Hate This joint on there. Uh, it's got the Tainted Windows joint on there. Got some couple of collaborations on there. We're going to dive in on this project. Uh, so with that being said, man, just talk about, um, obviously, you released Phases in 2020. And the follow-up is Phases 2, obviously. Talk about the Phases series of albums you've been working on. What led to um, you going on to putting out this follow-up album? So um, the uh, the first phases album was really focusing on like overcoming some issues that I had had going on at the time and also stepping out of what I'd originally been doing. I mean, I had done a whole lot of like rap rap songs, that the, the dubstep stuff and uh, the old albums. So I guess phases was transitioning into a new phase of like myself and myself as an artist. Right. So to follow it up, this is the first album that I've I engineered every song on the album except for one. Uh, I recorded myself. I learned how to do all of that. So the new phase for this is more of making this completely me, I guess would be the best way to explain it. And I'm starting on phases three this month as well. So it's going to be a trilogy album. So. Okay. That's what's up. Working on a trilogy. Um, and that's definitely a rare thing. Um, as it pertains to indie musicians. It's very I mean, I'm used to, you know, follow up, you know, and trilogy albums for mainstream artists. So it's very rare that a indie artist uh go through a route like this. Um, so obviously I've been following your music since your high dollar order days. Uh, Sir. So just seeing your we branded going under a different name and going through this um evolution as an artist is uh it's quite satisfying. Uh and just 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 seeing your contributions to Louisville hip hop and just the music scene in general is incredible. Um, you definitely put a lot of emphasis, and as you point out, you re-engineer this entire project. Um, yes, sir. So that's talk about the the engineering aspect, man. How, um, how did it feel taking that step as far as you, you putting out the music you want to? Uh, it was it was nice. It felt like I could get more creative, I guess, because I was the only person in the studio. Um. I feel like when you're around other people, you kind of rein in some things. Like I really stepped out of the lines of what I had done. I mean, I'm on phases two. I'm really singing. Like I did some singing classes and stuff. And like, I'm really singing on this album. And uh, I did a rock song on this album. I never thought that I would be doing that. So I guess it gave me the ability to kind of run wild with my style, which I hadn't been able to do before. Not that anyone had been stopping me, but that it was hard for me to step out of out of bounds, I guess, when somebody else was in the room. And it was also nice to have that skill set because the engineering that I was doing for other people is what paid for this album to even come about. So it helped me in, in that way because I feel like the hardest part of being an independent artist is being able to uh, spend the amount of money that it takes to get some streams that you really don't get paid for at the end of the day. So 
that was cool. So the engineering definitely pushed this, made this possible in so many different ways. And, and that's why I enjoy doing it the way that I'm doing it now, because I can really show my creativity and all of the influences that go into me more than I could before. So let's talk about the guest appearances on phases two. You got uh, mm -hmm. Contra Sherry, uh, you got Jada on there, Joe Clark, and Kara Williams. Um, talk about these artists that have contribute to phases two. So uh, with Contrary Cherry, she uh, we actually met through uh, a mutual favorite artist. We both really love an artist named Doobie out of Columbus. And I've opened up for him a few times out here and we met through that. And she has like a clothing brand and I have a clothing brand. So we became friends through that. And she also does um, like uh, tarot card readings and she's a medium and I'm really into that kind of stuff. And I read tarot cards as well. And it was cool to be able to link onto that. And I thought that she was the perfect person to do the intro for the album. So we brought her in and had her do that. Uh, Joe Clark and Kara are actually from my hometown. I'm from a place called Henry County, Kentucky. It's like 20 minutes or 30 minutes from Louisville. Uh, and they're, Joe is an established country artist out here and Kara's just starting out. And I really wanted to push them both into my genre to help them pull some of the people that I have as fans and help build her and then help elevate him. And I really wanted to throw some hometown flair into this one. I've never really done that outside of uh, songs with Fat Shane. And uh, and then uh, Jetta, she's uh, I, I know her brother very well, and she has a, a great voice. She just never made the real jump to do music. So I pulled her in, and I was like, let's see what this sounds like. If it sounds good, we'll put it out. And I lit a fire for her, and she's actually coming to me to engineer some new music from her, so getting her started. I really want to push these new artists that are trying to come in and give them the knowledge that I wish I had, you know, five years ago, six years ago when I started. So that, that was where the features came from for this one. And I wanted to change it up. I didn't want to have any of my old features back. I wanted all new people, so. Yeah. Definitely um, props to you on that as far as getting some new artists some shine you know being a helping hand on this project um, definitely shows that you know there's people out there um that wants to be helping hand in this music scene um so you know that that's awesome and you know hopefully more artists that listens to this album or listen to this interview for for whatever and be like you know what you know if, if this thing is going to evolve if it's going to elevate it's going to get more eyes man and gotta unite as one um regardless of different backgrounds uh different music genre backgrounds per se um so and you definitely evolve in this album giving you different styles of music mm -hmm. per se. Um, so yeah, this this is some good stuff you got here on phases too. So I appreciate um, you. So I'm you know I'm I'm vibing with it. Um now I wanna talk about one of the talk about tracks. Hate this that mm -hmm. was your latest single. Definitely seems very self explanatory, especially if you hear the song few times that I have, but from your perspective, talk about um um writing this and give us a story behind hate this. So I actually wrote hate this at my job. So like I was literally standing fifty yards from where my boss is and writing this song man. It was just a bad day, but I was like I don't know, I was I was in a, a mood to just like say what I needed to say about a lot of things, man. I had uh, last year was real rough uh, job wise, and I had some uh, rough like friendship breakups, I guess is how I would put it. That really, uh, you know, caused the rift in my life. And I feel like I needed to talk about that. And then I threw in the job, man. I was unhappy in my job. Uh, you know, I, 
I got paid a lot of money, but also at the same time, wasn't happy doing what I was doing. And I, w I wasn't happy with the way I was treated. So I was, they, they told us something about we weren't going to get these certain bonuses we were promised. And I just stood there for a whole day and wrote the song. And then I went that day and I recorded it. And uh, I didn't think that it would get the reaction that it did, but it ended up being my most successful uh, YouTube video. It's uh, I think my second most successful song. Uh, and it's it's been out since July and the, the number one song has been out for two years now. Uh, I didn't think that it would do all of that. And, and the music video was so much fun to do. Uh, shout out to Derek Spruill uh, for sake media on that one. And uh, Bun's Burger is one of my favorite places. It was just cool to be able to go and do that. And uh, I don't know, we kind of put it all together. And I think the video was perfect for what the song was trying to bring out and uh, the reaction that people gave it. It's crazy to think how many of us are so unhappy with like our jobs or stuff like that. I know everybody jokes about it, but to like really be angry enough to say that and just quit is, is a whole nother thing. And there's so many people that I feel like are in that boat and I wanted to touch that as well. So you definitely touched the boat on that one. <laughs> um I'm I've have I'm on I've had my feelings towards my job. So every now and then, whether it's break time or lunch time, I mean, I been I slide a song in through my phone or through my speakers, whatever, and play that song. Um, you know, just sometimes, especially if you go to work. Cause that's like the only time you're going to feel good, feel like, okay, new day, going to work. And then, you know, it, it, it makes you feel some type of way, man. You know, hip. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, anybody that has a job, regardless of the job title, you, you're going to go through some things with fellow co-workers and bosses and the way you get treated or you see somebody that you know getting treated. Um, it's tough, man. It's, it's it's real tough. So yes, sir. It's definitely um related with track. Uh, so go get the uh, phases two from OG yes, sir. Ugly. It's uh, available right now. Just came out. Uh, so go support it. Go go tell people. If you know somebody that's feeling some type of way, tell them to go listen to phases and go listen to hate this go listen to yes, sir. Too, because <laughs> you're getting different vibes they ain't just gonna get angry track tracks you know what i'm saying just it's just and you know you're talking about singing on this project going through some um rock tracks i want to talk about the emission of rock influence on this record um mm -hmm. so as far who who's some of your favorite rock artists whether it's local mainstream or, or anyone that you consider somewhat an influence on this particular rock element of this project? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge Nirvana fan. Uh, my son's middle name is Cobain. I'm like a huge Kurt Cobain fan and Dave Grohl. Uh, I think particularly for this, I really reached into uh, like Pierce the Veil, uh, one of my favorite bands, Hollywood Undead. I, I listen to more non-rap music than I listen to rap music for somebody who joined the rap genre for a long time. Uh, so my range is all over the place. I'm really into pop punk. I really like Paramore and Fall Out Boy, people like that. Uh, so the song that I have on there, it's a lot heavier than that. And I still throw in the rap because of like the Hollywood Undead influence. They still had that rap element to it to make it kind of different. Linkin Park did it as well. Yeah. Uh, I, I I love rock music. It's probably my favorite overall genre, and I never really attempted it. And I I got this uh I, I got a beat pack from uh Rieni, and uh and another one from uh, a girl named Emma, and that was on one of those. And I turned it on, and I was just in the studio listening to it, man. And I went in there and said, "Let's see what happens." And I really channeled uh more of that early 2000s sound for that and just let it go. And it, I, it turned into one of my favorite tracks. It's probably my second favorite track on the album. 
So, yeah, I've, I've been the the word that gets used a lot for people that listen to multiple genres is a unicorn. Um, yeah. <laughs> And I've been trying to come up with a different term. Um, obviously, if people pay attention to the Music Monday shows I've been doing, I don't just focus strictly on one genre. I try to get all genres on mm -hmm. the platform, per se. Um, but I guess I stick, I'll stick with the unicorn until I come up with some clever, um, right. clever term, per se. I mean, unicorn's not that bad, but I feel like that that could be a far cooler term than that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, you definitely touching all sorts of elements on this project. Phases two, it's out right now. Go stream it. Go buy it. Uh, go spread the word about it. Um. So you mentioned phases three. Uh, and yes, it is on the way. So. Talk about phases three as far as the direction you're going with that, and um, when would this be released? Uh, so there's, there's going to be a phases three that we we're, I'm gonna start working on. Uh, the later this month, uh, it's gonna have a lot more of the rock influence in on it. I really want to push that. I really like that. I want there to be less rap on this one. I want this to be almost an entire singing type of album. I'm also working on one. I've been working on one since last year uh, called Ugly Corleone. And I'm hoping to have that one done by January and have phases three done by July or August of next year. So we're going to be getting two albums, maybe three over the course of the next 12 months is the goal. And I'm pretty sure we're going to hit the goal. I'm, uh, I've been, like I said, I've been working on it for a little while and I'm about halfway through one. Uh, through Ugly Corleone, and I have uh, Phases 3 about halfway written. And I usually only write half of the album and record it. And then I write the other half a couple months later because there might be significant changes in my life where I want to go down a different road for the second half of the album. So we're looking at about a year for Phases 3 and about maybe six months for Ugly Corleone. Ugly clip, uh, Carolone. Okay, Carolone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so you definitely going all in on the rock element. Um, trying to put out a full fledged rock or punk rock inspired project. Um, so yeah. Um, I'm very intrigued with that. And you mentioned some bands earlier. Um, I definitely like Hollywood Undead. Um, yeah. for a very very long time. Um. I guess me, my love for rock came in the nineties, um, back in the TRL days. Yeah. <laughs> when I was watching Limp Biscuit, Corn, and and you know, Lincoln Park and other acts more the new metal. And then I started listening to alternative and heavy metal and, and some other genres along the way. So it was um you know, rock has definitely changed a lot. You talk about genres that have ch literally changed a lot. Um, mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's it's just like any other phase of life. You're gonna go through change. You're gonna hear some changes, obviously. Uh, so you know, this rock element album. So at least with phases two, people got at least got a glimpse of of yeah. what's to come for. Um, like a like a like an appetizer, uh, let's see. yes sir. Yeah, an appetizer. There we go. An appetizer for phases three and uh, future projects. I'm joined with OG Ugly out in the Louisville area. Uh, go check out his latest project. Phases two just came out just yesterday. It's available on all the platforms right now. Um, and that's OG Ugly. It's one word put together, just type those words in, and now uh, you go buy and purchase uh, Phases 2. Phases 3 is on the way, and future projects to soon follow. Uh, so he said three projects within the next year, at least. So, yes, sir. Uh, so definitely 
get in tune with, with, with the evolution of OG Ugly. So uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, I like the background and the back, you know, <laughs> look like a, um, a, a painting. Or, the phases, buddy. We got oh, the moon okay. and the sun. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> uh, you know, so yes, thank you so much for your time, man. Congrats on this um, release project. And I look forward to hearing more of that. And I'll just go in and put it out there, man. I've been doing this Music Monday thing since April. And um, playing some local artists, indie artists. And um, you, you you might get tagged in a future post here and there. Awesome. Uh, for a future Music Monday uh, episode. Just so I just thought I'd put that out there. Uh, awesome. I appreciate you, man. For real. Appreciate you, man. You have a good night. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. You too, buddy. All right. Bye-bye. I'll see you. Yeah.